So a couple of weeks ago I made a video turning my Sony ZV-E10 into a cinema rig, and that video did fantastically well, I mean we're approaching 10,000 views which is completely ridiculous, um, but in that video I showed my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K cinema rig, and a lot of people asked to see that. Um, and also they wanted to see footage from the Sony ZV-E10. So what you're watching right now is footage from that Sony ZV-E10 cinema rig. So if you think it looks good, that's the kind of image that you can get from a Sony ZV-E10 with good lighting and good lenses. Um, I think it's a pretty good looking camera. Anyway, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Let's rig it up. So this is a fantastic camera. The Blackmagic cameras are incredible, but they have a couple of shortcomings. And when you're building a, any camera into a cinema rig, the main reason to do so is to try and mitigate some of the problems that you get with the camera on its own. For example, this camera has really bad battery life, it has no stabilization and it's quite light so the footage can come out quite shaky. The screen is fantastic but it doesn't articulate so you kind of have to be head on with it. Um, and lastly, it has a very small sensor. So if you're wanting to get closer to that full frame or Super 35 look, you got to do something about that as well. So those are the main areas that I thought I wanted to tackle while building this rig, but also I did want it to look cool because ultimately whenever we're building a rig, we do want it to look pretty cool. Now the foundation to every good rig is a solid cage. So I'm gonna be using the small rig cage. Um, it's, it's a good cage, this is the full cage. Um, it's nothing crazy, it's nothing super special, it's just, it gets the job done. Now I've got a couple of attachments on here already, I've got a, a NATO rail on the top, and I've got a the SSD holder on the side, and a little leather strap, also from small rig, just as an extra grip. First step, take your camera, pop it into your cage. Now for attaching all of these components, I'm gonna be using this. It's a small rig multi-tool. It's a fantastic little tool. It's got all the little hex keys and Allen wrenches or any, any parts that you need for your camera rigging. They're all here. It's very, very helpful. Um, would highly recommend you pick up one of these. Sometimes you actually get them with some of your small rig orders, depending on what you get. Fantastic, would highly recommend. So once that's screwed into place, that's not going anywhere. That's nice and secure. This leather strap gives you a really nice holding point. So if for some reason you were to let go, it stays in your hand. I don't know why you would let go of your camera, but this helps. So next, let's go ahead and add the lens. Now for this, I'm actually gonna be using a Medbone Speed Booster with the Sigma 18 to 35 F1.8. This lens is absolutely fantastic. It's designed for Super 35 sensors. So once you add a Medbone Speed Booster on there, you get a roughly Super 35 equivalent, um, which just makes this lens perfect for this camera. It sits in there nicely. So here we have our, I mean, this is ultimately the whole image that you're getting out of this camera is from this. We're gonna add plenty more, um, but the main image of the camera is already done. So next we're gonna get started on the base plate section of this camera. So if you saw my ZV-E10 rig, you'll know that I do things a little bit differently with the base plates. So for this one, we're actually using the small rig base plate for the for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. The reason I'm doing that is it's very low profile. I know that you're supposed to have a, sp a certain distance between uh, the camera lens and the rails, but personally I like to try and keep them as close as possible while still being functional um, for follow focuses and lens supports and stuff like that. Uh, I just prefer to have them nice and neat and compact. So we're gonna take our base plate, we're gonna add our six inch rails. I like to use as short as I can uh, that I can get away with. And I find for this rig, um, anywhere between six and 12 inches is far more than enough. Um, if you, I mean, you can go longer, but um, I just find it starts to get in the way at that point. Um, but for me, I just do six inches, attach it right at the end there, uh, and, and I'm good to go with the rails. Now for power, we're gonna be using V-mount batteries, and we're gonna be attaching this to the back of the camera. What most people do is they attach them to the rails, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a monitor mount onto the back of the base plate, and then our V-mount battery plate onto the monitor mount. So you should be left with something that looks a little bit like this. You got your base plate, you got your monitor mount on the back, and your rails on the front. Now this is the Nitsi V-mount battery plate, and this is actually the version two. So if you're familiar with this base plate, they've actually come out with a new version that has replaced one of the DC ports with your USB-C port. And um, so I actually really like this design. It's also got lots of quarter 20 mount mounting ports all over the back of it, which we're gonna be using. Um, and this comes with two DTAPs, a DC port and a USB-C port. So you've got tons and tons of connectivity options for powering whatever you want to power. So there's two ways of mounting this. You can attach it to the screws on the bottom of the base plate or the ones onto the back. If you attach them to the back, you're gonna have a slightly angled um, battery on the back. If you attach them to the bottom, it'll be perfectly straight. Personally, I actually prefer adding it and having that angled look, 
and you'll have something like this. You've got this flexible uh, battery plate that goes on the back. And next we're gonna be attaching our camera onto the base plate. So now we have this. Now personally, I, I've never really liked it when there's big gaps in between the camera and, and, the, and the battery plate itself. Um, so I tend to have it tucked in and you get this interesting angle. For me, it's just a little bit unique. It has an interesting look to it, so I kind of go for it. And for, for this rig, we're using V-mount batteries. These are the KMT V batteries. They're small, they're light, um, and they're great. They're around $150 a piece, which isn't too bad for batteries. And I think for the amount of space that you're saving, I think there's a well, well worth it. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll attach that to the back of our plate. And there we have it. So again, you can have it sort of angled like this, or you can mount the monitor mount a slightly different way. Um, and you could have it sticking straight up. So immediately you're probably noticing a problem. One of the main features of this camera is the large five inch touch screen on the back of this camera. Now, obviously we do have the, the folding monitor mount on the back, so we can still access the camera anytime we need to but this can kind of get in the way a little bit. And I recognize that, but there is a camera monitor by a company called Port Keys that actually can control this camera wirelessly over Bluetooth. So that's what we're gonna be using today as our external monitor. And to mount our external monitor, we're gonna be using this. This is the Nitsi Lil Stinger handle. Not quite sure how to say that exactly. NATO attachment, but this is actually the version two. Um, I haven't really seen this talked about anywhere, but they came out with a version two of this. I think it's really nice, I think it's really sleek, feels really nice in the hands, um, and we're gonna attach it to this NATO rail that we have attached on top. Now, one thing about this camera cage is it does actually have a NATO rail built into the top, but for some reason I couldn't get it to work with this, this handle in particular. So I attached, that's why I attached a different NATO rail on the top separately, and that just slides on and screws into place, nice and easy like that takes no time at all. And we're gonna attach our monitor to the front of this. Now, one of my biggest pet peeves about certain cinema rigs that I see is that they'll attach the monitor right on the top, they'll use a big monitor mount, and it's sitting like way up here. And I just think it looks really weird personally. I like to have it quite low, as long as you can still see it. Um, and I'm actually using something a little odd. I'm using this tiny little small rig friction arm. And it's more than strong enough to hold this monitor. So I'm just gonna attach that directly into the top handle and then screw my monitor on top. It's very portable. I can put it pretty much any angle that I want to. If, I, if I'm shooting vertical for some reason, which I don't ever really do, I can do that, or I can just have it nice and low. Next, let's add our follow focus system. Now there's a couple of options that you can use for follow focuses. You can have manual follow focuses. Follow, that's hard to say that really fast. You can have manual follow focus systems or electronic wireless follow focus systems. So today we're gonna to be using the Tilta Nucleus Nano, but we're also gonna be using Tilta's side handle that has a focus wheel on it, which is really handy for pulling focus because um, you can do it with the tip of your finger. And now to attach this to this camera rig, um, we're gonna be using this, which is just a 15 millimeter rail clamp with a rosette on the side. Uh, and the reason I'm adding this before the quick release plate is because the quick release plate kind of gets in the way. So first off, we're gonna take this and we're gonna slide it straight onto the rails and get it as close, you get it nice and close down to the camera body. Tighten down the screw on the bottom and have it nice and secure in place. That's not going anywhere. Next, we take our focus handle and we attach it to the rosette mount. we have our focus control right at the tip of our finger. I absolutely love this handle. Um, I, it, it just, it's, it was a complete game changer for me. Removing your hands from the lens itself and not having to use the wheel, I can still carry the whole weight of the camera on this handle whilst also pulling focus. So for me, this is an absolute must. Now there'll be links to everything down below um, and this piece in particular, I don't think they really make it anymore. There is a new version, so we'll have that link down below. Next, because of our lens and, and our rail combo, we're gonna add our uh, lens support system, which is just a small rig lens support. And again, that just slides straight onto the 15 millimeter rails. And lastly, we're gonna take our motor and we're gonna slide that on at the very end of the rails and connect it to our full focus rings that we have attached to the camera. So now that we're done with everything to do with the rails, um, we can go ahead and add our quick release plate on the bottom. So here we have the bulk of the system. Lastly, all we have to do is run our cables and we're gonna add a matte box on the front and um, just to kind of complete the look, but also it helps us um, shade the lens from unwanted flares and we'll have our finished rig. So we gotta take our adapter ring for the matte box, screw that onto the front of the lens, add the clamp on matte box, tighten it down and we have that attached. And lastly, we have some cables to run. Now real quick, before I forget, we're also gonna add our Samsung T5 um, and just slot that into the T5 holder that we have on the front of the cage. 
Now there are a lot of cables involved with this rig and that's because everything is powered from one battery. That includes the monitor, the full of focus and the camera itself. So first off we're going to add our dummy battery to the camera. Alternatively you could use a D-tap to two pin port that is on the side here. That's probably preferable. Um, I'm just not doing that because I already have one of these. Um, but I'd probably recommend getting one of those. I'm going to leave a link for that in the description below. So we're going to use one of our D-tap ports that we have on the side of the Nitsi cage. Plug it in. And the reason I like having this offset a little bit is because I can wrap my cables around this connection and keep it nice and tidy. And there we go. The camera is now powered from the V-mount battery. Next, we're going to take a D-tap to NPF 550 dummy battery, attach that on the other side of the Nitsi plate. Now this dummy battery is actually going to be going into the Tilta focus handle to power the handle itself and the motor. Now we have the camera powered and we have the handle powered. Lastly, the monitor. Now if you choose to go with this monitor, it actually comes with a DC cable to this five pin little propri proprietary cable as far as I can tell. I haven't really seen this used. It's very similar to the one that goes into this camera, but this one has five pins instead of two. Again, we're going to attach this DC port directly into the Nitsi battery plate, run our cable, and attach the power cable directly into the monitor. And last but not least, HDMI cable from the camera to the monitor, and we are done. So this is the complete rig, and um, it meets all of the needs that I need it to meet. Yours will probably look different, and that's good. Like I said in my last video when I was giving five reasons to buy a Blackmagic Pocket 4K in 2023, one of the reasons was the rigability of this camera. It, it's a lot of fun to put together, and you can build it to meet your personal needs. So if you enjoyed this video, Drop a like, leave a comment, um, and maybe even subscribe if you want to follow along as we begin to build this channel. I hope you have a wonderful day.